So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers are the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Well, I can tell you, I haven't owned my bread machine probably. I probably had it a couple years. It took me, as long as bread machines have been around, it took me that long to break down and buy one. Because, you know, I really, I just thought, I don't really see no need in it. But I went ahead and got one, and I'm so happy I did. The fact that, you know, we make so much bread, and this is so, it makes really good bread, y'all. Now, I know there's probably some bread machines out there that don't do so well. This one I've got, I'm very happy with, and I'm sure there's probably some that's even better than mine. But I do have my bread machine down in my Amazon store if y'all want to look and see what uh, brand name it is. And there's some that makes bigger loaves, too. But with me and Mr. Brown, a one and a half pound uh, loaf is it's plenty big for us. Uh, in fact, a lot of times I'll even cut that in half and put the other half in the freezer till we need it. But because we want to get away and from store-bought bread, and there is times that convenience and you know you're needing bread that you'll run by the store and you'll pick up a loaf. Believe me, we all have to do that. But I am trying to get more and more away from it if I have time to make bread. Today we're going to be making a banana nut bread and the reason I'm doing that today is because I've got bananas that need to be used and because of the fact that also while we're making our banana nut bread while it's cooking the bread machine we're going to uh, pressure can pecans. We are going to I have been so blessed with so many uh, pounds and, and gifts of pecans from different states that my subscriber friends are sending me <laughs> and believe me we are using them too and uh, we love them I also have walnuts that I need to put up uh, but we are we're going to pressure can them and people say well and I've always froze my abundance of, of pecans and walnuts but y'all I'm my freezer space especially now these days is really it's is full and so I've got to go another way with this so just hold on for that because as soon as we get our bread started and get it in there we're gonna start uh, pressure canning some pecans I'm gonna show you step by step it is so easy you won't believe it and it just doesn't take that much time to even pressure can them and I'll explain all that to you because I know you're going hmm and uh, but we'll do that in just a minute when you're making bread in your bread machine, of course, I've got a recipe book. It's a bread machine recipe book, and it's down in my Amazon store, too. And it'll tell you the recipe and all the ingredients, and uh, you have to go step by step, just like the ingredients call for. That's how you will put in your in your bread pan. You can't go through there willy-nilly and just start putting ingredients in. You have to read your your recipe and put it in the number one number two you have to go all the way down to this to the very bottom of your recipe ingredients and that will be your last ingredient so you have to do it just like you're layering you have to do it just like that recipe calls for but it's not hard believe me okay i got y'all up here where y'all can see how we're going to put our layers of ingredients in our bread and machine and our first ingredient is a third cup of milk and I'll have the recipe down in the description box 
third cup of milk, two beaten eggs, you need a half a cup of melted butter cooled, you need a teaspoon of vanilla, um, i tell you something, you can also use uh, maybe a half a teaspoon of vanilla and a half a teaspoon of a banana, uh, banana extract. And something else is good is put a little bit of coconut extract in your banana bread. I don't know, it just makes it taste really good. So we got our teaspoon of vanilla. You need three mashed bananas. And I like to really mash mine good. They need to be good and ripe. Good ripe bananas. And I used my hand emulsion blender on this and got them just really pureed. You don't have to do that. You can just mash them up. But I like mine really, really mashed up good. So our three mashed bananas. You need a fourth of a cup of sour cream. Now you can use yogurt in place of this sour cream. Um, you could also use, if you've got a Greek vanilla bean yogurt, that would be good in here too, because the vanilla, the vanilla bean taste would be really good. I've done that before because I didn't have any sour cream. Okay, so we got our third cup of milk, our two eggs, our half a cup of melted butter, one teaspoon of vanilla, and three mashed bananas, and our fourth a cup of sour cream. Now we're going to start with our dry ingredients. And we need a cup of sugar. And I'm going to go ahead and put two cups of my, the recipe calls for all-purpose flour. I had some uh, hard white wheat berries that I had ground up and I had about four cups left over that I'd put in the freezer and that's what I'm using but it calls for two cups of all-purpose flour and then I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of salt and what I'm going to do is you're going to see me put my salt on this side and it's pink Himalayan salt and that's half a teaspoon and then you need a half a one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. I'm going to put that right in the middle. And the reason I'm doing it this way, so that I'll remember that yes, I did put that in there. I can look at it and say yes, I've got my salt, my baking powder, and then a teaspoon of baking soda. And I'm going to put it down this way. So salt, baking powder, and baking soda. And now you need about half a cup of pecans and you put it on the very top. I'm going to put a little more than a half a cup because I like a lot of pecans in my banana nut bread. Okay, that's all there is to that. Now we're going to go over there and we're going to stick it in the bread machine and get it started. Now I use my bread machine enough that it just, now for any more, it just sits right here at the end of my counter. Put my pan in there. We're going to close it. It's plugged in. And we're going to put this on quick, quick bread, which is number four cycle. And I want it on a medium crust dark crust so it's there so I got it on number four quick bread medium on the uh, on how you know really and truly you don't want your banana nut bread light but you don't want it dark so I got it on medium and we're just gonna push start I can walk away from this and start canning my pecans now now the only thing I will do is here in about a minute or two I will come back and I'll, I'll lift this up Sorry about that, y'all. I'll lift this up, and um, 
I kind of scrape down the sides and I'll shut it up and then I'm done. And what that does is to make sure you get a good pretty loaf that doesn't have a lot of dry flour or anything on the outside of it. But I mean, it's that easy and I'm going to have banana nut bread probably about the time that I have my pecans uh, all canned up. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to show y'all. Because a lot of y'all don't have bread machine. I was new to it too. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scrape this down. You see how that kind of gets on the side. And all you're doing is just kind of helping it out here. I have forgot to do this. And it's fine. Your bread's still fine. But it has, it'll has it have some of that flour and stuff on the outside. It's not as pretty a lot. So, that's done. Shut it back and walk away. The first step to canning these pecans is we're going to turn our oven to 250 degrees and we're going to spread our pecans out on a cookie sheet. Just a, a single layer of your pecans. Now I weighed these pecans. This was an, uh, a gift from somebody sent it to me from Texas. They're, they're Texas pecans. I have been sent uh, some beautiful pecans uh, from so many friends and I just want to thank y'all so much and I want y'all to know that I am taking using them <laughs> for sure and I am taking care of them because I want them for long term use that's for sure and because I don't have so much room in my freezer this is uh, now you can also vacuum seal but they don't last near as long than if you pressure can them now Spreading these out on a cookie sheet in a single layer. This, I weighed these, and this is about 2 pounds and 14 ounces of pecans. They're called pecans. And I'm probably going to have to do this in two batches. But you want them spread out pretty good. I'll have to do this twice. Now, uh, reading up on how some people pressure can their pecans. Uh, one said that four pounds of uh, whole shelled pecans will fill nine pints. But I'm not sure about that. Um, I don't think in the past I ever weighed mine. <laughs> i just done it. So anyways, I'm going to spread these out in a single layer. And I've got two pounds and 14 ounces. So We'll see how many pints I get once we get started. And this right here is, you need to do this. You need to uh, toast your pecans in a 250 degree oven for 30 minutes. It will dry them out. It will get that moisture out of them. And because nuts have oil in them, it's going to take care of that too to keep your nuts from getting rancid over time. So this is a very necessary step right here and this is probably this is probably what will take you longer than anything the whole process is getting your pecans toasted remember 30 minutes well they say anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes you don't want them to burn so keep an eye on them uh, check them after 15 minutes and then kind of stir them around but they can go as long as 30 minutes as long as they're not burning so I'm going to get mine in here and we're going to get to toasting them up In fact, I'm going to put time on it because I've got a lot to do. Put 20 minutes on and I'll check on 20 minutes. Our banana nut bread is still in the bread machine. It's a cooking away. It's about this easy. So I'm going to get some laundry done. I'm going to get the floors mopped while all this is going on and then we'll be back. 25 minutes. I'm going to take mine out. I tested one and they taste so good. They're good and dry. I'm afraid to go another five minutes with them. Because I sure don't want them to start going the other way. My kitchen smells so good. Between toasting these pecans and the banana nut bread in the bread machine, it 
smelling really good. So what I'm going to do is take these off without spilling them. And I want these to cool. And then I'm going to put the rest of them in the oven and get them toasted. Now I've got, I'm not for sure how many pint jars it's going to take. Now you can do these in, in half pints. And the next time that I'm going to can some, I'm going to do it in half pints. I would probably do most of them in pints because that's about the amount that I would use in a recipe. But I do need some half pints. But anyways... I've got eight pints out here, and we'll see. I mean, once I get this done, we'll know for sure. But I want to get all of them toasted and uh, get them cooled off because your jars are going to be at room temperature. Your pressure canner is going to be at room temperature. The water in the pressure canner is going to be at room temperature. But there won't be any, any liquid at all in these jars with pecans. In fact... You need to sterilize your jars way ahead of time because you need to make sure that they are absolutely dry. You don't want any moisture inside these jars. So make sure that your jars are good and sterilized, but very dry, and your uh, your lids and your room. Ooh, that's hot because you don't want, I touched that pan, because you don't want to take any chances of getting any kind of moisture inside your jar with your pecans. I laid my arm right on the edge of that pan. I'm very good at doing that stuff. Okay, I'm going to get this in there, get them toasted, get them cooled, and then we can start getting them in the jars. Okay, here we go. We're going to get started. Here I've got my, this is my first batch of pecans that I toasted in the oven and they are good and cooled off. So we're good there. I got my sterilized, very dry pint jars here. I've got my lids here that's been washed and sterilized. They're completely dry and my rings. So no moisture at all in your jars. So we're going to get started, and all we got to do is just start putting our pecans in our jars, and I'm going to leave an inch head space. I'm not sure how many pints I'm going to get with this bunch. Now, I've got a lot more to do because I have been blessed with so many pecans, so many, and I have got to start... Uh, doing a bunch of recipes using pecans and walnuts, y'all. And I do use them. I'm telling you, I just sit and eat pecans. And they tell you it's not good just to eat a whole bunch of them at a time. And I don't do that. But I also put uh, pecans and walnuts in my salads. Stuff like that. So, we eat a lot of pecans and walnuts. And I want to thank y'all, all y'all that have sent me these beautiful pecans. I want to thank everybody that has sent me gifts and beautiful letters and cards. Just, just makes my heart full. Because we love y'all so much. That's why we, that's why we open our doors and share our life with y'all. Because it's just stuff that we've done all of our life. And, uh. You know, all of our kids grew up and and left, and we went ahead, and the banana nut bread's done. <laughs> That's telling me it's done. But all the kids grew up and left home and having their own family, and... Okay, you can hush now. I know you're done. Thank you. But uh, I'm excited. We'll have to get that out because we've got to get it cooled off. 
but anyways, um, with the kids growing up, and we ended up just selling the farm and the cattle and the big house and and just uh, just going a lot smaller to make it easier on me and Mr. Brown. And it, he, you know, it has. It's made it easier, but we still are working our tails off. I'm telling you, there's no way that you can be sustainable and have a homestead and and then work a full time job and not just be chasing your tail. It's a job. And a lot of y'all know that because y'all are doing the same thing. I need to get the rest of my pecans, and I'm going to get this banana nut bread out real quick. We're going to finish up with our pecans while the banana nut bread is cooling off enough that we can cut it and try some of it. You know, I never really thought that I would buy a bread machine, but like I said, I'm glad I did it. And, you know, it sit in a box, I don't know how long before I ever got it out. And the first time I made bread, I thought, you know, this is, it's almost too easy because the fact that, you know, we want to, to keep making our own breads, even though we're very busy people, we still want to have that, you know, that time to be able to do it. And this just, this just helps so much. I can come in at night say around supper time knowing that i've got to have bread for the next day it don't take me no time to throw my ingredients in there stick that in there and turn it on and go about my own business the rest of the night and before bedtime i've got bread made for the next day so it has been a game changer for me that's for sure i'm going to try not to get any of the, the little powdery bits in here. It's not going to hurt anything, but I'm going to try not to get any in there. No more than I have to. And I think what I'm going to end up getting is maybe eight pints out of two pounds and 14 ounces. Or I may not. I may have to put this one in a half pint. But they were processed this at the same time, which is 10 minutes. So, it's not that big a deal. Yeah, I'm going to get me a pint jar and put these in there. But I want to separate because i got a bunch of little powdery pecans down here. And I don't want them in my jars. It's just the... Okay, I'm going to get me a pint jar real quick, and then we'll put our lids on, and we'll get these in the pressure canner. We've got seven pints and one half pint out of two pounds and 14 ounces of shelled half pecans. Now I'm going to very carefully take some vinegar and go around the top to make sure there's not any dirt or anything up there. I want to make sure that I get no moisture inside the jar though. So just carefully go around it. That's just one of the most important things is that we get no moisture in there. Okay, my canner's over here. I'm going to get rid of this. My canner's over here. It's got three quarts of water in it. I'm going to put my lids. Sterilized lids. Now, I was asked by a company, and I these are... I'm going to show you the box here in just a minute. It's F-O-R-G-A-R-S. It's four jars. And they asked me if I would review these uh, cannon lids. And they sent me a whole bunch of them. And I'm going to try them on my pecans today. And uh, I watched another YouTube uh, channel use them. And she was real happy with them. So these are BPA free. Uh, dishwasher safe. And uh, we're going to see how they do. Four jars, F O R G A R S, four jars. So that's the lids and rings that I'm using today. 
and we will see how they do. And if they do good, I'll put the link in my Amazon store. Now I'm going to put the rings on here. Finger tight. I want to make sure they're on there good though because I don't want any moisture getting inside my jars. I'm going to go ahead and start putting my jars in here. The water is at room temperature. I did not heat my water. There's nothing heated. My jars are at room temperature. Now, toasting your pecans, like I said, is very, very important because it is going to dry them out. You don't want no moisture in there, and it's going to take care of that excess oil that your nuts tend to have. And what I'll do is uh, I'll do just like any canning process, put my lid on there, let my valve start to steam. First try this time. Now I'm going to turn my, my burner on high. Everything's good. I checked my seal and I checked everything good. So I'm going to let this start venting. And when it's really got good steam coming out, I'll uh, time it for 10 minutes. And then once it has uh, vented for 10 minutes, I will put my gauge on there and what it'll do it'll start coming up to pressure and here where I live the pressure needs to come up to 10 pounds and I'll adjust my burner and then once it gets to 10 pounds we're only going to pressure cook it for 10 minutes so it doesn't take very long now Danny's not here today and I can tell you he wanted to be So, while my pressure canner's doing its thing, I was going to tell y'all that uh, Mr. Brown, let me get my mic over here where you can hear me. Mr. Brown's not here again today, and I know that y'all are missing him, um, but I'm telling you, the man's very, very busy, um, not just here at the homestead, but at work, but... Today was very important, too. Now, you're going to think, oh, yeah, right. He went fishing. <laughs> yes, he loves fish. He lives for fishing, y'all. He just loves it. It's it's how he just uh, just rewinds, and, and he it just makes him feel good. But the main thing is that that's part of our sustainability is putting fish in the freezer. Uh, fish is a good part of our diet. We have really good fish here in uh, Arkansas because we have our rivers are good and clean and beautiful and we get them from the lakes and everything's good so fish being a part of our diet is a good deal so I'm hoping that he catches some today because we're getting kind of low in the freezer so um, besides him loving it it does uh, it does fill our freezers and feeds our bellies so anyways uh, I want to tell y'all that because I know y'all are starting to wonder where is Mr. Brown, but he's just a busy man. So I'm going to get started on some different things while my pressure canner is coming up, and uh, we'll get this banana nut bread and uh, cut it and we'll taste it. Okay, guys, while we're waiting on the pecans to come up to pressure. We're going to taste this banana nut bread. It makes a, a good heavy loaf too. You know how dense banana nut bread is. and uh, But it smells so good. Now, I have never been able to make the banana nut bread in the bread machine that it didn't sink in the middle just a little bit. And a lot of times that happens in, even in my, when I make it in the oven. So, But it still tastes good. 
But one thing I have found out that um, at the end of your cycle, when it's beeping like it was telling you that it's done, if you look in there and it just the top of it still doesn't look, you know, all the way done, just shut your lid, leave it off, and just let it continue to cook in there just a little bit more because it's still good and warm in there. And then look at it again, and if it looks good, then take it out and cool it off. So I cut my piece. Don't that look good? It's got a good texture. It smells so good. Now I use this, like I said, with uh, some milled, uh, it was hard white wheat berries, what it was. And I had, uh, I had milled too much is what I'd done. So I had about four cups left over and I put them in the freezer till I knew I was gonna use them again. We'll put some of this good Mennonite butter on here from the Mennonite store. Boy, I wish Mr. Brown was here. He could taste this right out of the bread machine <laughs> while it's still hot. Good stuff. You know, there's nothing any better than bread coming out of it. You know, fresh bread coming out of the oven. I love cooking bread in my wood cook stove. But I can tell you, <laughs> when you can do this right here, especially making your, your whole, your wheat bread or your rye bread or anything like that, a lot of times, you know, I can go in there and make me a loaf of rye bread knowing that the next day I'm going to be having uh, Reuben sandwiches or something like that. And then I can, you know, cut what I need off, put the rest in the freezer. And it's just about that quick. I've not really had to worry about it or, or think that I had to make a lot of time for the rising and just all that part. So I have to say, I really do like my bread machine. Okay, it's a steaming really good, so we're going to give it 10 minutes. Okay. It's been 10 minutes. We're going to let this come up. 10 pounds of pressure. And that's for my altitude. I'm going to try to find my my chart, and I'll put it down in my description box. And once it gets here, I'm going to try to stabilize it, and then I'm going to time it for 10 minutes after it gets to 10 pounds of pressure. Well, friends, our jars of pecans are out of the pressure canner. They process for 10 minutes, and I let the pressure go completely down to zero. They're ready to come out, and here they are. And every one of these jars, every one of these lids, I'm sorry, have sealed. So, so far, I'm happy with these lids. These are four jars, canning lids, and rings. F-O-R-G-A-R-S, four jars. And like I said, I was, uh, they sent me these lids and rings to review, and this is my first review on them, and so far, so good. I'll put a link down below in my Amazon store if y'all want to look them over. I'm going to leave my rings on for right now. I always leave my rings on anywhere from 12 to 24 hours, usually about 12 hours before I take them off. Make sure I got a good seal on them. But they look really good. I don't see any moisture in there. I mean, it looks bone dry. The pecans are not, I mean, they look just like when I put them in there. And uh, I seen a comment on a, a video I was watching the other day of a lady, she was canning pecans, and somebody said that they had opened a jar up that was nine years old and said they tasted the pecans and said the pecans are still good. Now, I, I can't, can, I don't know about that, but I do know that these pecans canned like this will be good um, anywhere two to five years, somewhere in between. And, and it could be more than that, 
but my pecans don't last any longer than that, so I can't vouch for that. I use a lot of nuts, especially during the, you know, Christmas time and Thanksgiving. But I'm telling you, I've got so many pecans right now. I have been so blessed with them, and I want to be able to put them up and keep them. And I don't have the freezer space for them anymore. I have vacuum sealed some, but I don't want them all vacuum sealed. So I'm going to be doing a lot more putting them in jars and pressure canning them. And I think my next batch I'm going to do in uh, half pints. I get them all done. Now, I'll do more in pints too, but I want both. I want half pints and pints. I don't think I need any quarts. In fact, I didn't see anybody that done them in quarts. So I don't know if that's something that you can even do if you can. And I guess you can. The process time would be the same. But, anyways, I love this. And what I'll do is I'll put these. Uh, Tomorrow, I'll take the rings off, and I'll put them in the box that the jars come in, and um, I'll fill my box up, and I'll just push it under the bed. They'll be under there, dark, cool place, stored, and that's a good place to store a lot of your your uh, jarred-up uh, products that you don't, you know, if you're running out of room in your big pantry or your small pantry, whatever, use under your bed. That's a good storage place. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed this video because I really did. I enjoyed doing it. And the the biggest thing is, is it's something that I needed to get done. And uh, I'm going to just keep doing it again until I get them all processed. But uh, in making the banana bread, I'm going to cut that in half. I'm going to put half of it in the freezer, keep the other half for me and Mr. Brown to eat on. And uh, it'd be good with a cup of coffee, don't you think? I went and changed my clothes. I've got my fix to go out and dig in the dirt so before it gets too dark outside get some outside stuff done but I got a lot done today that's for sure and the most important thing I got done is being with y'all and I appreciate y'all being here and being with me taking the time to watch and listen and I hope uh, I helped you in some way and I hope y'all enjoyed it and as always we love y'all and uh, hopefully hopefully Mr. Brown will be in the next video with me. He'll be doing something with me because we're always doing something around here. So, God bless. We love y'all. There was something very important I was wanting to tell y'all. And it has something to do with the pecans. It I've done lost it. I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe I'll think of it. And if, I'm sure y'all probably asked me some questions about it, and I'm going to think, oh, yeah, I meant to say that. So, anyways, if you have any questions, just ask in the comments below. And uh, I'll put everything in the description box below the video of uh, the recipe for the bread machine banana bread that's so good. And uh, I love it. I love my bread machine. It just makes life so much easier when you're wanting to keep everything homemade and and it just frees up a lot of your time, too. So it's a good thing. Anyways, we love y'all. God bless. We pray for the world over. We pray for you. If you're suffering in pain, if you're, you've got any health issues, or you just need prayers, believe me, we all do. We're all in a little bit of a slump, not knowing where things are going. But if we stick together and we prepare ourselves for what could happen but mainly just keep your eyes to the Lord and, and pray because he's gonna see us through this it may not be the way we want it but it's in his will and his way so God bless everybody and we'll see you in a couple of days you get a line I'll get a pole honey you get a line, I'll get a pole, babe. You get a line, I'll get a pole. We'll go down to the crawl dead hole, honey, babe, be mine. Mm -hmm.